Hey guys, it's Tomatoda. So today's tutorial, I'm going to show you how to make this Ichigachi photo holder. And yes, the face is a cane, which essentially means that you can make a whole army of these. I'll first be starting off with their face. So I mixed this beige color and I'll be shaping it into a wide cylinder. And as you can see, it does have a little bit of dust, but for canes, this amount isn't an issue. Unfortunately, this amount of dust is an issue, and I ended up having to cut off the surface of the clay. It's because I was wearing a new black shirt, and no matter how many times I cleaned my hands, the clay kept attracting black lint. So I had to change into an old white shirt. I think ideally, the best thing is to not wear a shirt at all, but sometimes situations prevent you from being topless, so an old white shirt is the next best thing. Here, I'm trying to figure out the layout for her face, but it took me a couple of tries until I was actually satisfied. Now, you don't have to make a cane for Ichigachi's face. You can just make it like the normal way, but by making a cane, it'll be easier and faster to create a bigger army with a more consistent look. So I'd recommend using this cane method when you need to make more quantities for like conventions or art fairs. Whenever I use drill bits instead of straws to create any holes, I have to cut an entryway to the hole just cause it's so small. Here I'm planning out how I'm gonna go about this cane, like what needs to be cut first and the minimal amount of cuts needed. I'll be starting with the eyes. Taking my drill bit, I'm going to try my best to drill straight down. I'd recommend looking at every angle, like the side and the top view, just to make sure that you're drilling straight. But I couldn't hear because the camera was in the way, so I just kind of winged it. And let me show you how unstraight that hole was. But it's okay for this particular cane because if you look at some images of Ichigachi, she sometimes has a wonky face and I think it adds to her cuteness. So in my opinion, this cane is a pretty forgiving one. Just as how I can't drill straight down, I also can't cut straight down either. So I'm aligning everything with marks to help guide me make a better cut. Taking some navy colored clay, I'm going to roll it into a rod that is the same exact thickness as the drill bit that was just used. Then I'm going to place that rod into the dips and put the face together. Now I'm going to repeat the same steps with the pink cheeks. During the early stages of my cane journey, this drilling, cutting an entry, and placing the rod inside wasn't an ideal method for me because it always turned out a little bad. My preferred way was to make a hole with a straw, shove a rod of clay into the hole, and just pack it in. But as I keep doing this drilling method, I'm actually getting good results every time, and I low-key like it a lot now. Practice really changes things. Anyways, I think this is the hardest part because the cut for the mouth has to start in between the eyes and the cheeks. The cut is actually going to be made right above the cheeks. So if you don't cut correctly, it'll dig into the cheeks and we want to avoid that as much as possible. Thankfully, since I cut along the guidelines pretty accurately here, I managed to only cut through the flesh. Some more guidelines. I'm going to use a straw to dig into the mouth part. Using the navy clay, create a bigger rod to fit the mouth and cut off the excess half. Put the face back together and done. It's pretty simple-ish, right? All that's left is to reduce it to the appropriate size. I reduced it a little bit first and then cut the ends just to make sure that the face looked okay. Then I drew out on a piece of paper how large I wanted my photo holder to be. Pictures come in all sizes, but I didn't want to accidentally make the holder too small. I also made sure that the cane fit the face on the drawing too. But suddenly, I got this random inspiration to make two mini holders on one platform, so I drew this one out as well. Now I'm trying to gather up as much scrap clay as I can to use as filler for the inside of the strawberry. 
But because I made that coaster video a few weeks back, my scrap clay collection is depleted and this is all I had. When I conditioned everything in my pasta machine, it turned into this beautiful maroon-ish color, but it's still trash clay. Picking a color for the strawberry, I have two different shades of red here, but I'm going to use the smaller one because I've had this one in my inventory for over a year and I want to use this opportunity to finally finish it up. I conditioned it and rolled it out of my pasta machine on a very thin setting to stretch it out as much as I can because I don't have a lot of it. Luckily, my filler clay is reddish, so it blends in perfectly. The thing is, if your outside clay is really, really thin, the color of the filler clay inside might show through and it's gonna end up looking kind of splotchy. So usually I would recommend you work with a thicker flat sheet, but in this instance, this worked out for me. Now I'm going to take a piece of the filler clay and roll it into a ball that's about the size of my drawing. Then I'm going to take the red sheet and wrap it around the filler. Make sure that there's no air trapped in between these two layers because that can cause cracks when you bake it. If the crack is small, it'll be pretty invisible once the clay cools down and settles, but if it's big, I don't know what to say, man. That sucks. After fully covering the ball, roll it out and smooth it out. You can use your fingers to blend in the lines. While rolling, if you see a bubble move around underneath the surface, that is trapped air. I don't have any here, but if you do see the bubble, what I would recommend you do is slice the middle of the bubble, squeeze out the air, and blend everything back in. Now I'm shaping it into a strawberry shape and the bigger bottom part of the shape should be flat. Then taking my blade, I'm going to cut a slit where the photo is supposed to be held. I'm going to reshape any distortion that happened from the cut and I'm going to insert the blade backwards again into the slit. It's supposed to keep the slit from merging together again while I add on the other details. Here I'm rolling green clay for the feet and rounding off both of the ends. And when I cut in the middle, I got two feet. They're both going to be placed underneath the strawberry, so the indents here will make it look more natural. And because this is a standalone holder, I want the legs to be really secure and not snap off someday. So I'm taking these metal wires, which are leftover end parts of these flathead bead pins, and I'm going to bend it into an L shape. Carefully insert the wire into the legs. Using a separate pin, I'm going to poke holes into the body beforehand so when I put in the legs, they don't get distorted from the pressure. Now I need that blade again, so I'm going to replace that with two sheets of cardstock paper. Slicing off a thin sheet of the face, I'm going to add it onto the body. Lastly, I'm going to add the details of the seeds using navy colored clay. You can use liquid female or whatever to secure the seeds, but I didn't do that. Now setting this aside, I'm going to quickly try out my second drawing. If you look at drawings of Ichigachi, she has a navy blue outline around her face and her whole body, but I didn't include that before because I thought maybe it would be weird in 3D form. Like, of course I can put an outline on her face, but how am I going to put an outline on the strawberry body, right? So I made the set kind of like as an experiment too. I thought I'd try out the blue outline at least around her face. And to be honest, it wasn't bad. I ended up liking both versions. Also, since these are going to be put on an actual base, I didn't add wires into the feet. Once everything is done, it is time to bake. So here they are baked and I'm going to remove the paper. 
Everything looked good until I noticed that I cut the slit crookedly for the bigger one. Nani? Now it's time to clean off the dust with my favorite acetone. The red clay bleeds and transfers a lot, so clean that one last. I'm using a cotton pad to wipe off the general big areas, and then I'm gonna go in with a cotton swab to clean the smaller, more detailed areas. Acetone will mattify the surface, so if you miss a spot, you'll be able to tell. If you have any fiber stuck from the cotton pad, use tape to lift it off. And these are done! Here, I'm testing it out with a Polaroid and it does fit, but it takes a little bit of effort because the space is really snug. But this paper photo slides in very easily. I even made some Ichigachi hair ties and this little trinket tray that fits my hopes of ever owning another hamster anytime soon. <laughs> I still have a lot of the face cane left over, but because I don't have any more filler scrap clay, the rest of the strawberry army will have to wait until next time. I hope you guys maybe try out this tutorial someday because like I said before, the face cane is kind of forgiving. But um, thank you guys for watching. Bye.